everyone, I'm Antonine van Sale of Inata South Africa and in this short video we'll discuss ways in which to optimize color stability in red wine as early as harvest and fermentation. So obviously tannins play a massive role in stabilizing color and tannins can be divided into two main classes, hydrolyzable tannin consisting of elagic and gallic tannins and condensed tannin which are basically proanthocyanidins containing um, catechins. So hydrolyzable tannin comes from chestnut and oak, as well as gallnut and tara. And condensed tannin will typically be found in grape skins and seeds or exotic wood species like a bracho or mimosa. Now, different tannins have different effects in your wine. So depending on what you want to achieve with a tannin addition, you will make your choice accordingly. Um, gallic tannin and elagic tannin are very efficient as antioxidants. For color stability, condensed tannin is your best option. For aroma cleanliness, elagic tannin would be best. Protein removal is best achieved with condensed tannin. And for metal chelation, elagic tannin is a good option. So basically, your red color obviously comes from your free anthocyanins, which you need to protect as best you can in order to maintain stable or to have stable color for longer. Um, anthocyanins are very unstable. They are easily oxidizable and they are easily bleached by SO2. They can also precipitate if bound to unstable molecules. Anthocyanins can be um, prevalent in wine in three forms of course, the unstable free form, and then also as a co-pigmented anthocyanins or condensed anthocyanins. We want as much as of our color compounds to be either co either to have gone through co-pigmentation or to be condensed. Condensed anthocyanins being the most stable form of color that you can have. So how can we do this? How can we get more of our free anthocyanins in a stable form that will last longer in your wine, especially for wine that's aged for many years? Um, so these are the steps we can take. First of all, we need to avoid oxidation in the grapes and the juice. We can use a, a good extraction enzyme at the start of fermentation or during crushing. We can, during fermentation, use the right tannins at the right time. And after alcoholic fermentation before MLF, we can use a reactive tannin in conjunction with oxygen management to further stabilize color. So to avoid oxidation in grapes or juice, um, obviously enzymes, tyrosinase in healthy grapes and lacase in botrytized grapes play a huge role in making sure oxidation happens very fast in this stage. Um, to eventually form quinones, which are strong oxidants responsible for browning. So in order to avoid oxidation, we can add ascorbic acid that reacts directly with um, oxygen. We can add sulfur dioxide to act as an antioxidasic. Um, in other words, it can act to stop oxidizing enzymes tyrosin tyrosinase and lacase. We could use glutathione to block quinones. We can use tannins, which can actually have a, a, a very multifunctional um, effect. It can react directly with oxygen. It can stop oxidative enzymes and act um, to scavenge radicals. So the best product on our range that can do a multitude of things is AST, which contains potassium metabisulfite, hydrolyzable tannin, and ascorbic acid. It can be used on the grapes during transport and um, 10 grams per hectoliter of this product will provide approximately 28 ppm of SO2 and 30 ppm of ascorbic acid. So now that we have avoided oxidation to a degree, we um, can select our extraction enzymes. Zyme Color Plus is our best extraction enzyme. It has a side activity of protease, which makes it very effective for color stability, along with its effect to be a good maceration enzyme. And why is a good maceration enzyme important, particularly one with this protease side activity? The protease side activity will help the enzyme to break down proteins in the grape so that the proteins don't precipitate 
tannins from the grape, which will have bound at the cyanins to give you stable color. And this is what we can then expect. Um, so in this graph, we are looking at the evolution of tannins and anthocyanins over time during maceration. And the solid lines um, depict the concentrations thereof. So as soon as Zyme Color Plus is added at the beginning of maceration, you can see a shift of the brown tannin line to the red um, dashed line, showing how the tannins, the concentration can increase when Zyme Color Plus is added. And just to further show you another example, um, over here, tannin extraction uh, was measured, or the concentration of tannins over a period of 48 hours. And it was found that when Zyme Color Plus at an addition of 20 grams per ton was compared to Zyme Color, which is a normal pectolytic enzyme, um, there was an increase of 5 grams per hectoliter of tannin in the first 48 hours. Um, so in that way, it becomes obvious that an addition of Zyme Color Plus really can protect the grape's own tannin. This is expensive tannin if you were to add it. Um, so it's a, a very crucial part of the color stability process. Then to add the right tannins at the right time during maceration, um, we have several tannins on our range, uh, but examples of a good sacrificial tannin is tan firm color. This can be added at the very beginning. Um, it can be added in the crusher already or as soon as possible after that. And then as a second tannin addition, one can look at a grape seed tannin as the best type of tannin to enhance condensation reactions in the mast. So to look at all of our maceration tannins, um, here we have the three tannins on our range that are effective sacrificial tannins. This means that you are adding this tannin to bind to proteins in the must so that your own um, natural tannin in the grape remains available for binding to anthocyanin. So these tannins comprise, are comprised of condensed tannins or a blend of condensed and elagic tannins and are very effective sacrificial tannins. Then as a second addition for improvement of the condensation reaction to have the most stable kind of color that, that's possible, um, you can add either tan V, which is a pure grapeseed tannin, or tan color, which is a blend of grapeseed tannin and polysaccharides rich in um, glutathione as well. And this will also then be a, a good source of free manoproteins, giving some mouthfeel along with the tannin. Then for co-pigmentation, it's important to note that it doesn't need to happen between anthocyanin and tannin, but can also happen between anthocyanin and polysaccharides. And for this reason, these three products are very effective to help form co-pigments. And it's important, um, this phenomenon, it can account for between 30 and 50 percent of all the red color in your of all the color in your red wine. Um, but the tannin that is very effective for co-pigmentation because of its low molecular weight is tan XC. And then you can also find Pro Uno as a polysaccharide along with Pro Blanco, which is also a polysaccharide that further contains glutathione. An example of how tan XC can help to aid in co-pigmentation. Um, over here, you can see clearly that a treated sample was much darker than a control sample when added um, with tan XC. And then also ProBlanco, you wouldn't expect that a polysaccharide can have such a big in influence on, on the color intensity, but here we can see um, anthocyanins and tannins have respectively 45% increase and a 30% increase when treated with ProBlanco. And then the last step that we can take is after alcoholic fermentation before MLF. Macrooxygenation is a very effective tool to stabilize color. This is a last chance for adding um, or for stabilizing color. This can be done in conjunction with a very reactive tannin, tan E, um, and it just further helps in this last chance where there is some acetaldehyde then available to, to mediate the reaction between tannin and anthocyanin.
So this is basically the last steps that you can then take to stabilize color. And those are, in a nutshell, the steps that you can take. Um, obviously, there is much more detail behind this. It's a very complex um, type of chemistry, um, but please feel free to contact us for more information um, on these products. Thank you very much.